Today on Everyday Tactical Vids, we're talking about a bug out bag. This is Tim as usual. Thanks as always for checking out our videos. Before I go into the actual contents of the bag, I want to share a little bit about the thought process that I went through as I was building this bag. The first thing, as you can tell from the description, is that this is a Walmart items only bag. So nothing that I have in this bag was purchased at any store except Walmart. I didn't even order it from online at Walmart. It was local brick and mortar stores. You might be like me and you might have multiple Walmarts in your area that you can drive to. So there was a couple different items that I wanted to get, but they didn't have them at this one Walmart. So I drove 15, 20 miles away to the other Walmart to pick it up. At the end of the day, everything came from Walmart. The reason I did that is because I A, wanted the challenge and B, I wanted to think about how would you build a kit if an emergency was impending, like you knew a huge storm was coming, you wanted to build a bag like this, and you didn't have a lot of time to order stuff online or go to a ton of different retailers out there. You had to go to one main store and just make it happen quickly. So that was part of the challenge I was going through in my mind as I was putting this together. The second thing is that question, what is this bag for? As I was putting this together, the thing that was going through my mind was Hurricane Katrina. I've been down to New Orleans a bunch of different times for relief efforts connected to Hurricane Katrina. So I've seen that area and I was there actually the year that it happened. I was there probably four or five months after. So I was able to talk to some of the people and really get their experience of what that was like. This bag that I've built is based on that experience and other similar experiences that have happened when it comes to natural disasters or things like that. You got to grab your bag and get out. So for Hurricane Katrina, it could have been before the storm actually hit. People wanted to grab a bag and just go. It could have also been after the storm hit for the people who waited it out. They, you know, they saw, well, I can't stay in this house. The water's rising. I got to get my bag and go. So if you did get a bag and go, how would you, or what would you have in the bag to get to an area that would, you know, keep you safe, keep you uh, alive for a handful of days until maybe some help was able to get there. Hurricane Katrina, it took quite a while for a lot of resources to get back into that area to help the people. In most cases, you're talking about 72 to a little bit more uh, hours when it comes to the amount of time it takes resources to get into that area as far as relief and such. So this bag is built with that in mind. You grab the bag, you run out the door, you get away from the immediate disaster to a place where you can survive a little bit more long term until help arrives. I realize that there are scenarios where help doesn't arrive for quite a long time. This is built with the idea of saying get out and stay alive, stay away from the immediate disaster for a little bit and sustain your, uh, keep your survival going and maybe even get some rescue going if you get in that type of situation. So what you have here is not a wilderness survival bag. You're going to run to the woods and live forever. It's a bag that you can get away and probably with this bag and some other resources that you would find after, for example, a natural disaster, you could live and survive for a while. Okay, let's talk about the bag and then what's in it. This is the Outdoor Products Arrowhead. It is a 46 liter pack. Some of the features, a top flap which includes zippered compartments, two large zippered side pockets, an adjustable waist strap and sternum strap. Does have a cool mesh padded back to get some airflow in there so you're not sweating as much. It is hydration compatible though it doesn't come with a hydration pack. It does have four comp compression straps to secure the load down. It also has an all-purpose carrying handle and it has two removable internal aluminum stays. So if you want to reduce the actual frame of this pack that has the internal frame, you can take those out. This was the other pack I was considering using. It's also from Outdoor Products. It's the Vortex 8.0, and it's a 25 liter capacity bag. The reason I chose the other pack versus this one was that even though I was able to get about 90% of my gear into this pack, it was just stuffed so full. And the other thing is that it was resting really far off my back. It was just so deep because there was so much gear in it. So I chose a slightly larger bag, and even though the other bag is not as full, it just rests more comfortably on my back as I'm actually using it. In the scenario I'm thinking of for this bag, it's a grab the bag and go immediately. I'm not wandering around the house, picking up some items, taking my time. I'm getting the bag and I'm out the door as fast as I can go. Now with that said, what you're looking at are some items I keep in a separate bag on top of the pack. So when I get outside, I can put these items on my person, put the pack on my back, and then start moving. The reason I've done this is because if I need to ditch the pack for some reason, I still have some items with me that can affect my survival or my rescue. What you're looking at are a hat, my Leatherman Wingman, a lighter, a cliff bar, a coast flashlight. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that one or get a different one, so that's why it's still in the package. And then a Smith's sharpening tool, which is obviously for sharpening knives and such, but it also has a ferro rod, a whistle, a compass, and an LED flashlight built into it. The last item you see there is a gallon of water, and in the scenario I'm thinking, if I had the pack on my back, I could actually be walking and carrying the gallon of water in my hand. I do have some water in the actual pack, 
But this way I can carry this gall gallon of water. If it gets too heavy, I can just leave it. Not a big deal, I already have some water. But if it's not a major pain and I can carry it, I then I have an additional gallon of water that I'm carrying with me. And it's actually hard to put a gallon of water into a pack and not take up a ton of space and not have it kind of be unbalanced as it rests in the bottom of a pack. So that's why I would carry it in my hand. Again, if it gets annoying, I don't want to carry it anymore, I can just leave it because I do have my other water. But this way I'm guaranteed I have a gallon of water in my hand and then some more water in the pack. One of the things I liked more about the other bag as compared to this bag is that the other bag had pockets and then pockets within the pockets so you could organize things very effectively. With this bag there are a lot of larger pockets so you can't organize things as neat and tidy as I would personally like but there, there is quite a bit of room and there's also leftover room so if in the process of bugging out I found some sort of resource I could actually put it in this bag because there are, there are some other spaces that aren't totally used up. Let's start with this top pocket here. You can see I have wet fire. This is still actually in the box. I would probably take it out. I'm just not sure if I would even keep this because I do have some chapstick which you can use in the, uh, in the same way. But a five pack of wet fire, that's what I have up here. I have this reflective vest immediately available. So if I was walking in a scenario where it started to, you know, it was nighttime and there were a lot of cars driving or a lot of, um, you know, there was a chance of me being in danger and I wanted to be seen, I can actually put this on. Also up top, couple cliff bars just for immediate nutrition. Got a poncho up top. This is a lightweight rain poncho from Walmart, obviously. Uh, but this is, I want this immediately available in case the storm does start to hit. I can just throw this on quickly. I also got a set of mechanics gloves. These ones are called the mechanics utility gloves. And inside here, I've just got a little notepad if I need to take notes. And then over here, I just cram these into the different fingers of the mechanics gloves but I've got a wide variety of writing utensils so sharpie two pens a multicolored pen and then a pencil a couple more things in this top section I do have some wire I also kept this in the package this is one of those would I actually use it would I not use it I think I probably would but for this point as I'm thinking about it I wanted to keep it in the uh, in the package in case I decide not to I did get as you can see let me put it up nice and close a hundred pound test there the reason I got that is because if I'm gonna be doing any sort of trapping yeah I mean a squirrel is not gonna need a hundred pound test but if you did catch you know you, you set out for a squirrel and you catch a raccoon you want something that's gonna be very very sturdy I don't want to say well it's a 20 pound raccoon so let me get 20 pound test wire I want something that's super strong so that's why I went with this heavy gauge wire the last item I'll talk about in the top section here is my fixed blade this is from Buck here's what the knife looks like and I'll, I'll share with you, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on what's available at your local Walmart. But when it comes to fixed blades that Walmart sells, I was not super impressed with the selection. They do have knives from Kershaw, from SOG, but the variety of those were folding knives. And I wanted a fixed blade knife. Uh, the, the other fixed blades that were available were like from Mossy Oak and some other companies. And it was like two big knives for 20 bucks. And that makes me pretty skeptical about the quality. This one was about 25 bucks, and Buck makes some, generally some pretty good stuff. They do have low-end stuff, but this is actually quite a nice knife, and uh, this gives me some options when it comes to more aggressive use with a fixed blade knife. That's why I chose this one. Moving on to this side pocket. Zip ties with a zip tie to keep them together. Lots of different uses for those. And the only other items I have in here two bottles of water. In addition to that gallon of water I talked about earlier that I'll be carrying, so now I have plenty of water available for hydration. There is a pocket that runs down the center of the outside of this pack. In there I have 50 feet of paracord. This is from Ultimate Survival Technologies. I didn't get it because of the name, but just because this was the right size of what I was looking for. This was about five dollars or so. I also have 15 pound test line, 500 yards. Usable for fishing, sewing, stitching, a wide variety of uses there. I also have my kit of toiletries in a bag. This is actually the zip ties bag, so I emptied out the zip ties and then put this stuff in there rather than buying a separate bag for this. And I'll talk about this, uh, these items in a minute. And then the one other thing is my soap, and it just wouldn't fit into this bag, so I'll probably put this inside a Walmart bag, tie it up, and then put this back into the center pocket. Here are the items in my dob kit. 
I got wet ones instead of toilet paper because they can be used for toilet paper as well as other uses. Extra band-aids, hand sanitizer, some more sunscreen, higher power sunscreen, Tums, Tylenol here. I can't actually take ibuprofen uh, just because I take blood pressure medication, so I have to take this instead, so that's why I got Tylenol. Uh, toothpaste, toothbrush in a case, triple antibiotic ointment in case you do get cuts and scrapes, you can make sure that they get cleaned up, some gold bond, and some deodorant. To some people, this type of kit with toiletries would seem like a waste of time and space, and I get that. For me, I'm thinking, since I'm not out in the middle of the woods, only worried about surviving in the woods, and you know, I don't care how I smell or whatever, this actually just improves my quality of life here. If I'm able to brush my teeth at the end of the night, maybe put on a little deodorant, sanitize my hands after doing something. I mean, in the middle of the woods, if you're just trying to stay alive, that's a different discussion. But in a 72-hour scenario, maybe a little bit longer, if you're trying to just kind of keep your head in the game, for me, these things help my psychological uh, level of peace and comfort as I'm moving through a extreme or survival situation. Flipping the bag around to the other side, this outside pocket, I have some hand warmers. And regardless of what time of year it is, sometimes it can get cold at night, even during the summer. So this is another option just to warm up a little bit. I've got a kit. This is both a fishing kit and some other items. We'll talk about that in a moment. I have one, I think I have the second one in here as well. Two emergency uh, survival or astronaut blankets. Very inexpensive, they reflect a lot of heat back to you. So you could put this uh, on top of you, you could put it inside a sleeping bag, you could put it on top of you, even under a tarp for extra warmth. I've got my sun and bug repel. So this is to keep the bugs away and to keep you from getting too sunburned. These are a couple bobbers that I had that didn't fit into the kit, so I just stuffed them in this pocket. And then this is a very small first aid kit. Let's see if you can see there. Yep, Johnson & Johnson. Very basic, but you know, cut scrapes, bruises and such. This will cover some of the basics. And then in my dob kit, I have some other medical options as well. Let's go into the main section here. First thing you'll see is 75 feet of rope. So this, in addition to my paracord, in addition to some of that fishing line, a bunch of different cordage options when you're in a bug out situation. Now we go into the inner main compartment. And as I mentioned before, because there aren't lots of sub compartments, a lot of this stuff is just put inside and I'd have to sort through it. That's, I chose this pack because of the advantages. I would say that's one of the disadvantages. So as far as food options, we got some beef jerky. We have a mac and cheese. This obviously needs to be cooked. I have some Gorilla Tape. I have this Stanley Canteen. It's called a Splits Apart. It splits Apart and it's easy to clean. You can store water in this. I was a little bit skeptical about that, so that's why I have the other two water bottles on the outside. But I'll show you, when you do take this top section off, I do have some things stored inside a spoon and a fork, a bandana, and then in the bottom here, I have my water purifying tablets, one to purify, one to take the taste away. Continuing down into this main section, big old stick of pepperoni, and the reason I got this is because of what it says down here. August 29th, 2014. We are in April, so this will last for a long time. As long as you're checking your bags regularly and swapping out stuff that expires, this will last, and uh, it's got fats, it's got proteins, and it's easy to pack, easy to take on the road, so that's why I picked this. This is a classic for me when I go camping. I almost always bring pepperoni, cheese, bagels, things like that that can, uh, that can be carried and beat up a little bit but aren't going to break on you. Running down the back of the pack, I have an 8x10 tarp, and this is for shelter, most obviously, but a lot of other purposes. I do have a sleeping bag. This is from Ozark Trail, which is a brand that's very popular at Walmart. It may actually be their brand. It goes down to 40 degrees. This is the coldest weather bag I could find at my Walmart that wasn't very, very expensive. Um, this is already in the plastic. It has a, um, a compression bag, so I could get this even smaller if I wanted to, but I wanted to keep it in the plastic. Why take it out if it's already wrapped and sealed? This way, if my pack gets wet, uh, I don't have to worry about this getting soaked because it's already in a bag. As far as tools, I did grab one of these Coleman Camp Axes, and I got it because of the axe and also because of the hammer option as well. And it's not super heavy. I was surprised how light it was considering that it is all metal. 
other than this uh, this handle here. I did get one of these Coleman folding saws. Super, super lightweight, and I haven't used this yet, but I thought this would be good to have in the pack. I couldn't find any other high-end options for folding saws. People love their Bacos or their Coronas, whatever it might be, but this is the best that I could find at my local Walmart. And then down at the bottom, I have my bag of clothing. So let me open this up and show you what's inside there. When it comes to clothing, I try to keep it pretty simple. I will note it is a little bit challenging to get items that will keep you warm when as far as seasons you're shifting into the warm weather. So I was hoping to find some of those last ditch uh, fleece items, some things that were on sale that were you know, left over from the winter, but most of that stuff is gone. So I was stuck with what I could find at the Walmarts that I went to in my area. First I have here a long sleeve t-shirt. It's made by Russell. And then you can see here, this is their Dry Power 360, it's a moisture wicking material, so that's one base layer. I could not find anything like that material for pants, so I just went with some basic Hanes long underwear. It is cotton, so you don't want to wear this uh, when you're hiking or walking because if you sweat, it's not going to dry out as quickly as something like that would. So that's my base layer for my pants, or for my lower body, I should say. Then I have two pairs of uh, mixed wool socks. They're not true wool, they're kind of, you know, a... a um, a blend of different fabrics but this will dry out quickly and it will keep me warm at night this will get my feet quite warm if I am hiking or walking a long distance uh, they are pretty cushy though so I wanted something that's gonna be comfortable and uh, I could have just you know grabbed a pair of cheap athletic socks but I thought these would be better and then for a top layer especially in the cold evenings this is made by actually their walls workwear and as you can see on the front tough workwear it has a heavy heavyweight fleece and it's insulated for warmth and the other thing that was interesting to me is that it has this what they're calling let me get out of the light a little bit durable water repellent finish so this should uh, shed water it's not waterproof but it'll repel the water a little bit and inside you can see and that's pretty much it other than the items I already showed you and um, what I would be wearing this is the this is the full rundown for the clothing I would have in my bug out bag here's my fishing kit with some other items as well I've got I'll show the hold this up close here. Very large needles for sewing, stitching, whatever the case may be. I do have another lighter in addition to the one that's in my pocket. And I also have that ferro rod that's built into the Smith's sharpener. So I have a, a bunch of different options for fire. I've got chapstick. This is more for getting a fire started than it is for me thinking about uh, chapped lips, but you could use it for both. Got some lures here got over here two other lures these are some of my favorites rooster tails and then I have one two three small uh, packages of um, dental floss forgot the name for a second and then lastly I have a bunch of hooks with the line already attached since I've been putting this pack together recently, there are some other items I've been adding in last minute, and these are three of those items that just was making some final choices. The first one is my pack cover, and this is what the box looks like. It is from Outdoor Products, and this is used to cover the pack to keep it dry in case it does rain. The second is an Energizer headlamp. This was the, as far as the quality, this is the highest quality one I could find at Walmart that I was willing to pay the money for. There are some from Bushnell, but they're brand new to the market, at least to Walmart that I've seen. They probably have been out for a while, but I've never seen them before in Walmart. And so I wanted to go with something I've used and uh, trusted before. And I've used this style headlamp before. I've been happy with it. And then just batteries. I don't have a ton of different batteries. I've got double A's and triple A's uh, based on some of the items I have and also other items that I might be able to get a hold of. I didn't want to carry a ton of extra weight. And my preference for organizing these in a bug out bag is just put some tape around them and then throw them into a, uh, a section of the pack. You can even put some tape over the top so that they don't bump into one another and start discharging. But I don't want to carry a lot of extra weight. Uh, compare this to how I keep them in my car survival emergency bag. I keep them in a box there, but that's because I'm not carrying that bag a long distance. So limiting the weight, put some tape around them, and we're good to go. We've been looking here at my bug out bag made exclusively from items purchased at Walmart. Now it's time to get the discussion started. So start leaving some comments. Let's hear your thoughts and feedback. And I want to encourage you to offer thoughts and feedback to one another. So if someone says, hey, I like that item, but I would try this instead. If you've used either of those items, say, hey, I've tried that one and I like it or I don't like it. Uh, I do my best to reply to a lot of the comments on my videos, but it's also helpful to have the entire Everyday Tactical Vids community engaging with one another. So I encourage you to do that. 
As always, thanks for checking out the videos. Please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids here on YouTube. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and check us out on Tumblr. Take care.